<laughs> All right, here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I know it's been a while since I've posted anything and I do apologize for that, but uh, let me get you up to speed. Last couple of weeks, if you're not aware, California has essentially been on fire. Parts of it probably still are. Um, around me, there's a lot of fields and a lot of, uh, you know, like greenery and such. It's very beautiful, but it's been a very kind of dry summer and uh, we suffered a lightning storm. Well, that lightning storm set fire to all the dry brush that was out there and lo and behold, we got a pretty bad fire. Um, there was nothing around me that got on fire, nothing close to the city where I live in. However, um, the smoke engulfed the entire city and to the point where there was ash on the house, all covered in ash, like snow, um, or like a volcano went off and all my cars outside were covered in ash. It was so bad, you could barely work, walk around, do anything out here. It was really terrible. So obviously I couldn't work on this thing or anything, you know, out here without basically getting sick. So that's pretty much why I've been out. Uh, it's been really, really rough. And uh, now I'm gonna get back at it. So I do apologize, but uh, from here on out, we should be pretty smooth sailing. We'll see, right? So anyway, um, today I was gonna try to get into the gauges um, just to finish up that project, but you know, I decided to do something a little different, something that's a little bit more necessary at this point. And well, let me catch you up. In uh, about three weeks ago, I suffered something really embarrassing. This thing, I took it out for a cruise one night, right? Just took it out, drove it around, enjoyed the vehicle, and I got stuck in a little bit of traffic. And it was only about half an hour worth of traffic. And out here, that's not that bad. However, this thing started overheating at idle which is really bad. This thing runs perfect when you're moving, even at low speeds. But once it hit traffic, and I didn't know this, uh, started climbing up. Not really fast, but it started climbing. Um, got about 200, I started getting a little Fahrenheit, obviously, so 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it was okay. But then it made it past 210, and I started sweating a little bit. Then it made it past 220, and then I had to, you know, find sort of an emergency exit and turn off the vehicle. Thankfully, I still made it home. Um, nothing really bad happened to the vehicle. It is cast iron, so they can take a lot of heat. Um, but I had to diagnose the thing, and it turns out that it's really not one part to be blamed. There wasn't anything leaking. There wasn't anything going to the combustion chamber. Sometimes head gaskets give out, and a compression can get into the, the, the water or vice versa, and you start overheating the vehicle. Uh, I checked spark plugs and all that stuff. There's nothing in the, in the, there's no water in the oil or oil in the radiator. So everything's fine. What it really is and what it comes down to is a compound problem. The, what I mean by that is uh, it's a combination of a lot of unfortunate things. Let me, let me explain. When I first built this engine, um, I had a budget to work on, right? So I had, this whole car has been on a strict budget since the beginning. And that's because I just don't have a whole lot of money to work with. So, and I like, like a lot of you guys, right? So when I built this engine, thankfully the engine was still running uh, from the other vehicle I had, I put in what I could with what I had. So I, I bought the best water pump I could get for it and I put it in there. I bought the best uh, radiator I could get for it and the best fan that I could get for it and all within a budget. So the best for the money, right? Unfortunately, that just isn't good enough for this vehicle. Uh, or for what I'm doing with this thing. So because of that, even though it's okay when I'm driving, it's not okay when it's sitting idle. I intend to take this thing on a long drive, as many times as I can, as often as I can. I don't wanna be caught overheating out in the middle of nowhere because I'm stuck in traffic. That's just unacceptable. So I've decided to upgrade the unit. Now that I have a little bit more money to work with, uh, or a little bit better budget, I'm gonna upgrade the cooling system. That's what we're doing today. So I got a, a new water pump, a new radiator, a new fan, all new stuff, different stuff. And I'll explain why I'm doing what I'm doing, what the upgrades are, and we'll go from there. So yeah, you guys are coming along with me. Uh, we're gonna do this today and uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so let me give you an overview of what's gonna happen. Uh, so as you can see down in there, it's pretty simple. Uh, just belt, electric fan, radiator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the radiator off first, so that off first, disconnect all the hoses and everything, uh, disconnect the fan obviously, so fan, radiator, your hoses, and then the water pump, uh, just because it'll give me a lot more space to do that. 
So yeah, Raider is going to come out first. I actually drained it last night because it's about a little over two gallons of liquid in there. So like I said, just take all this apart and we'll go from there. All right, guys. Also remember to disconnect your battery uh, just to make sure you don't ground anything out and being safe and all that good stuff. So yeah, make sure you take that. I took mine off completely just because it gives me a little bit more space to work with. But uh, yeah, yeah, let's go do this. All right, so as you can see, radiator is out. It was pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, now it's time to move these hoses kind of out of the way and uh, take off this water pump. Now, this is gonna give you a better view of that thing. There's that water pump. Now what I gotta do is, you see that alternator? I need to loosen that belt up right there. Yes, it is what one single belt operation, which is really nice. It makes it really simple to do. But anyway, I'm gonna loosen this up, take that belt off, and then just take all the bolts that hold the water pump in place and then from there i'll show you the difference between the stuff i bought and what i'm taking off all right so let's get to it all right so as you can see the pump is out along with the radiator and the fan Again, pretty simple. This thing wasn't on here for very long. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is clean up that mess up there. And, you know, just get rid of all the gasket stuff. Just prepare it for the new pump. And I'll show you that in a second, what I'm putting in there. But, all right, uh, let's go look at the differences between the new stuff and what I took out. Okay, so let's compare radiators real quick. You see, that's the new stuff right there. And here's the old stuff. Now, let's go over the old stuff. All right, we got the electric fan that worked okay for what it was and this radiator. Now, this radiator is not leaking. There's no issues with it, really. And if you look in here, it's it's pretty clean. I don't know if you can see it in there, but it's actually really clean. Hold on, let me get a, a lamp real quick here. You take a look at that in there. A better picture here. Let's see here. There we go. So, yeah, very clean. Very, very clean, two core radiator, pretty good. Not bad for a, a, v, a six cylinder, sorry, not bad for a six cylinder and all that stuff, but not quite enough for this engine right here. And so the, this combination is fine for a low horsepower, low performance engine, you know, something with a lot less cylinders in this thing. This thing on the other hand is a little bit more substantial. Let me show you the difference in this one. Now this one, has a three core, so one, two, and three. You see that? Now the three core is gonna help flow more water and cool off more surface area of the of the, of the liquid that's in there uh, to help ease in cooling. Now another thing you need to realize is see this fan and that fan, they don't look too much different, right? Now the difference in the fans is the thinness. Now you'll notice, you see that side profile right there? You see how small that is, right? Let me see if I can get you a better, better picture of it. Yeah, you see how tiny that thing is? It's real thin. Now let's take a look at this one. See how much taller it is compared to that? It's more substantial. It's got a bigger fan. It's actually a slightly bigger uh, fan in radius. And it has a bit more speed to it. This one flows roughly 1700 CFM. 3200 CFM. That's a brand new fan. So... I'm gonna see what this does. I'm pretty sure this will take care of all my my um, my cooling issues with having enough air go through this entire thing. Yes, I know I'm supposed to have a fan shroud, all that stuff, but I simply don't have the space for it. And I didn't have enough money for a dual fan setup, so I have to work with what I got at the moment. So right now, I think this will work. Now, let me show you the water pump real quick. Okay, guys, so a quick overview of what I got going on with the water pump here. So you'll notice the two different water pumps. This water pump, this one right here, is the one that I originally took out of the vehicle. This has been on this vehicle since I rebuilt the engine. And uh, it's been a pretty good water pump. I mean, it does pretty okay. And uh, in normal situations with normal cooling factors and the normal idling uh, speeds, it works just fine. But unfortunately, I'm not doing normal things with this car. So, uh, you know, it's idling a little lower because I like the, the way it sounds, so on and so forth. And, you know, honestly, this was good for the time, but it could have been better. And so we have this water pump. Now you'll notice how the impeller, this thing, is different on this. See how it's a much bigger wheel? It looks more kind of like a turbine, you know, or some sort of Ferris wheeler. Look at this. It's kind of an impeller, right? So 
This is far more efficient than this. I believe the brochure says it's about 60% more efficient than the old style, this one here. So it should provide a lot more flow as far as cooling is concerned. Um, and also you'll notice that they, they have a different spout. So this is designed for, I believe it's a 1974 and newer style uh, of 318 or 5.2 liter V8. And so they had the, the inlet tube, the, the inlet pipe for the, the supply of the coolant for this water pump uh, on the other side of what they normally had it. This was the original on how these cars are supposed to have it on this side. So that would be towards the driver's side. This was towards the passenger side. They, it, the spouts are a little bit different, but uh, that really didn't matter. It just, they changed positions for different packaging reasons. Anyway, the other difference is you'll notice how this housing is slightly different than this. Well, that's because this style is aluminum. This is cast iron. The other thing to note is this impeller wheel is actually a uh, billet aluminum, whereas this is just like a stamped steel thing. So aluminum housing, stamped steel impeller, aluminum impeller, uh, cast iron housing, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so let me show you some other differences. The other thing I got going on here is you'll notice how this how this looks and it's a little silver. I actually painted this so it can match the, the, the look of the housing that this goes into just a little bit better. I'm not trying to pretend it's aluminum at all. It's just looks better this way um, and it helps it from uh, rusting because it was at its uh, natural color it was natural cast iron and that's going to eventually rust and so I just you know it's a good idea to paint them but anyway so there's this cast iron and then you have this style and I'm going to notice something different see how the aluminum one is a little taller than the cast iron one well that is important for a couple of reasons a this was designed for packaging reasons, right? A little smaller, a little shorter areas. This is the original style of water pump that the V8 Barracuda is supposed to have. So this is the style of pump that it should have been to begin with. Reason four is that shorts. Now, stuff fits better. This is a little bit bigger because when this came out, uh, the vehicles were a little bit bigger, a little bit longer. And so this style of pump fit. This shaft had better, you know, bearings and things of that nature. It was an improved design over the cast iron one at the time. They have since improved the cast iron one to the point where this is actually better than this, which is pretty hilarious. But anyway, uh, this is going to end for two reasons. A, because it'll flow better, and B, because it's shorter. And what that does is it provides more space between the uh, water pump pulley and the fan that I'm putting in. Now, you saw that fan. It's a little thicker. Well, I need all the space I can get in between the fan and the water pump because they're essentially almost butting up against each other. So that was part of the reason why I went to the smaller fan to begin with was because because of this bad boy here. It just didn't have enough space. But anyway, now that we've compensated for that, uh, let's move on. All right, guys. So I hit a bit of a snag. Um, unfortunately, the radiator did not fit quite as advertised because, you know, when do they ever? But um, <laughs> uh, I got it in there. Uh, I'll show you in a second how I got it in there. I had to do a little bit of work and it actually took up most of the day. So uh, let me just show you what I had to do, okay? So as you can see, you know, this fins nicely. You know, it's, it's in there. Uh, it fits where it needs to be, but it did not originally. So you'll see these tabs here. You see where it mounts right there. Well, I actually had to, these actually come out all the way over here. And they come out straight, which made the, the radiator about an inch, maybe an inch and a half, too far forward into the engine bay. And I need, remember, we talked about space. I need as much space as possible. So I ended up having to redo these, these uh, <clears throat> flanges here so that I can mount up the radiator closer to the actual core support, which, you know, I got enough space there. It fits it's fine. It's right there in flush. And I got it to fit here. But because the way this engine sits, and it, you non-Mopar guys, if you don't know this, these Mopar engines sit slightly strange. They sit off to the side a little bit to make space for the steering. And actually, the, there's a lot of like uh, math involved in the way these things sit. I'm not going to get into it right now, but basically they sit strange. So because they sit strange, everything else in this car sits strange. So as you'll notice, this tab's bent one way. And we'll move on to the next one here. This one's bent slightly less because reasons. Anyway, so it's in there now. That took me forever to do. Um, also, guys, uh, one other thing. I did actually paint 
the front side of this uh, radiator, mostly because I really, it looked weird from the front. You can see all the aluminum, and some guys like that, some guys don't. I, I'm not really into it. Um, I'm actually going to cover this so that it's all blacked out and just, you know, when you look at the front of it, I wanted it to look as stock as possible. So the aluminum sticking out is just going to look weird. So yeah, I painted the front of this at least. I'm going to keep these tanks this color. I like aluminum and that's not too much aluminum. That's just right. So I'm going to leave it alone and yeah, we'll continue from there. So we got that in. Um, everything's prepped. I scraped off all the nastiness that was in there. Um, it's all ready to go in, but unfortunately, I'm out of time. And... Um, I'm exhausted guys. So we're going to end the video here. Uh, this will be part one of two apparently. So we'll continue next time on putting everything in and see how the cooling works. You know, uh, we'll see what I run into as far as wiring that new fan. I don't think there'll be any issues with it. I already test fit everything, so it should be fine. But, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching guys. Oh yeah, one other thing. Uh, well, let me just tease it real quick. Can you guys guess what this is? Ooh, stay tuned to find out. All right, see you guys next time.